D.C. with a 31-25 lead, and the story's been Ryan Sidney for Boston College, Clark. 14 points here as we reach the five-minute mark. He's been terrific. Rebounding the boy, leads him in minutes, scoring, rebounding, assisting, steals, and he's showing you why today. 14 points. He's had four offensive rebounds already, a couple of assists, stuffing the stat sheet as he's been doing all season long. Now Chris Young forced back onto the court because of the two fouls, but yet Boston College has had their way in the lane, so keep your eye on Young with the two fouls, also with seven points. Yeah, he's been a real presence at both ends. Got to be careful with the two fouls. He can do that. He's got excellent hands and a nice out there, catching it, keeping it high, and going right to work. Well, he's Mr. Durable. 93rd straight game he's played for Michigan. Back the other way, and the bucket falls down for Troy Bell. He's in double figures with 10. Boston College doing a nice job of trying to attack inside, off the dribble or with the pass. They realize that Young is the only real big presence for Michigan inside, and they're trying to go right at it. Robinson, who did not start this game for disciplinary reasons, along with Lavelle Blanchard. Bryant, who's come off the bench for some big minutes for Al Skinner. Bell pushing the tempo, and this time, though, a little too strong on the pass over to Sydney. And so a timeout here in Ann Arbor. 3.56 to play in the opening half, and Boston College up by five. Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman scores and highlights plus the preview. Number four, Tennessee. Number two, Florida, which will follow this game. All that more coming up on singular at the half. And how about the start by Ryan Sidney in this ballgame? He's doing everything. Driving to the goal. This one was a basket plus the foul. He's got 14 points. Going to show you his ability to get there with the left hand. Sweeping layup. He's also got five rebounds and two assists. And his motor is constantly running. There you see his numbers. Well, we talked to him last night along with his backcourt mate, Troy Bell. Very excited about this game. Out of Ann Arbor, played one year, his final senior season at Pioneer High School, which really, Clark, if you walk out this door, you can spot it. Robinson had to hit a tough fall away. The ball came off the side of the basket. Sydney now down court, and he's going to carry it. Turnover. Well, Bernard Robinson and his disappointment about the loss at Bowling Green punched a fire extin extinguisher glass. And there you see his right hand wrapped up. He's got nine stitches in that right hand because of that lack of control of his emotions. Did not start today as a disciplinary measure. And on that last play, you could see where he couldn't really effectively use the right hand. He had to try to get it back in his left hand going against his body and turned it over. Angerson inside John from the corner. Queen, sweet shot. Avery Queen with his fifth point. Only 5-7, but a dynamo. 33-30, Boston College. Sydney wants to answer back. Off the front of the iron, but Bryant battles hard for the rebound. Your guards have to get long rebounds, and because Boston College shoots the three a lot, 17 attempts from behind the arc per game, your guards are going to get opportunities to come up with long boards. Blanchard. Well, what a nice stroke. I mean, Clark, you know about nice shots. That's just straight up, hands up, shoulder square, and good release. Honey sweet, fundamentally sound, and that's the strength of his game. Catching and shooting. Early on this season, Blanchard has been trying to beat people off the dribble. The strength of his game is the spot-up jump shot. Michigan making a run at Boston College. Two and a half to go. Clean holes. Anderson now holds back to Queen. 12, 11, 10 on the shot clock. Anderson trying to move. He's off the far side wing. Works it in. Tough shot. Sydney the rebound. Three on two, Boston College. And the follow. Count it. Put it down for Bell. He's got a dozen. Boston College always attacks. And the key for Michigan as we move towards halftime is one, don't let Boston College get a surge to end this half. And if you shoot it like that, <laughs> you'll wreck every rally. You'll double blanch it from deep. But then the other thing, can Boston, Michigan sustain the kind of effort they need for the next 20 minutes? 35. Boston College will keep it going. 35 our score under 130 left. 
inside and a nice soft touch by Yuka Agbai. And he's quietly, Clark, put up eight points. He had 13 against St. Bonaventure on Wednesday night. Well, the coaching staff, because they wanted to attack Chris Young, made Yuka aware that he was going to have his number called a lot, and he's responded here in the first half. Green dribbles out of trouble. That ball tipped away, and the long pass Bell chased from behind but keeps his control and the bucket. So the backcourt duo of Bell and Sydney now with 28 between them. And another two points off of a Michigan turnover. That's been one of the other stories. Turnovers leading to points for Boston College. Queen Young squares up, count it, and the foul. Chris Young in double figures with 11 and a chance for a dozen. Well, there's the deflection by Walls and then the push ahead. And Troy Bell makes it look easy. And then Chris Young, who has been a real force, especially at the offensive end, catching, squaring up, knocking down the shot while he's fouled. Young with a dozen. And Amaker going to get him out. He's got yeah. the two fouls. Well, he made a bold move, Clark. He had him on the bench, and Boston College made that 6 nothing run. And then Young came back in. Dangerous move by Amaker. And he comes in and scores. He's got five more points. Yeah, 12 points, and he's 5 for 5 from the floor. And he had seven when he sat down with the two fouls, and he scored five more. Since then, as Tommy Amaker rolled the dice a bit, was able to get production without Young picking up the third foul. Walls leads it for Sydney. Tough cross court pass from the corner. Off the iron. It's Chase. Two officials. Lavelle Blanchard touched it last. Last touch by Michigan. Strong uh, officiating crew here Ted Hillary, Ted Valentine, Jim Burke. Right on top of it. A timeout in Ann Arbor. We'll be back. The Chrysler Arena. Well, this game on paper, BC comes off a 27-win season last year. Michigan only 10. Didn't know really what to expect, but Tommy Amaker, Clark, has really put a different emotion inside this ball club. And this is a team, it's a young team, but when they play at home, they typically play better. They, they're 2-2, two and two, both wins coming at home. But he's got excellent production from everybody that's played so far today. Defensively, they've been solid. Their only weakness has been turning the ball over. And if they can put a handle on that, they've executed well at the offensive end, and their defense has been scrappy. Boston College, on the other hand, an experienced team, a confident team. They were relishing this opportunity to play in a fairly hostile environment on the road against a Big Ten team. And right now, it's been tip for tap. Very evenly matched first half. And also, Clark, it was interesting talking to Coach Al Skinner and Troy Bell and Ryan Sidney. They want to prove, as that bucket finds and had a three-pointer, they want to prove that the 27 wins was not a fluke a year ago. So we're at halftime. Boston College over Michigan, 42-38. Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman will be along with Singular at the half right after this message. And a word from your local station. Ripping it up for 17 in the first half. Well, he's showing us everything in his package, and he's got a bunch. This kid is terrific. One of the outstanding guards I've seen this season in college basketball. It's early. There's Troy Bell, though. His partner is not too bad himself. But Ryan Sidney, that's a three-pointer at the end of the first half to give Boston College that four-point lead. But you look at these numbers here. What you've got to look at, the turnovers right there, and then also the offensive rebounds. We've got rebound totals, but Boston College has nine offensive rebounds. Because of that, Craig, they've gotten 11 more shot attempts, and that's why they're on top. And they've scored off those nine offensive rebounds. They had seven in the first 14 minutes and then five more late in the second half to keep Michigan within contact of Boston College. Now, can Michigan sustain the kind of effort they showed in the first half? That's a good answer right there. Uh, Chris Young, he, he just said, hey, Clark, I got one answer for you, and it's the right hand. They just throw it over the top. Queen. Young is fronting in the post. He catches it. Now we go up top from the basket camp. Throw it down, Chris Young. 14 points. The foul, his third, is going to camp. And so now 15 for Chris Young, doubling his season average of seven and a half. Well, we got to be looking at career high territory for him. 
We'll find out here momentarily, but those are large numbers for Chris Young. Roniger picks up the foul. We just found out his career high is 19 for Chris Young. Good effort there in pursuing the ball. In the corner, Young's down. Slow to out. get up. No, not out. Boston College will take it out of bounds. Kenny Walls. Bounce pass into Sydney. With 17 points and part 16 or six rebounds in that first half, and he's still working hard and a whistle. There you see the numbers for Chris Young. Against Eastern Michigan, his career high is 19. Penn State 17. And he's fast approaching those numbers. He's got 15 and 6 today. And I don't think he's missed a shot yet, has he, Craig? Six for six from the floor is Chris Young, and he's got a couple of old-fashioned three-point plays in that mix. And he just picked up his third foul, and that puts Amaker up on the floor, pacing early here in the first uh, few seconds of the second half. Two-point game, Boston College. 43, Michigan 41. Ingerson on the wing, guarded by Ryan Sidney. Now gives off Droniger, baseline, pulls the double team. Well, look at Young trying to battle for the post. They give it off to, to Queen, 12 on the shot clock. Good defense by Boston College. Little floater to Young. Right hand, a tip wouldn't go. A fresh 35 on the shot clock, and Blanchard gets the bucket. Nine points for Blanchard, we're tied at 43. Agby, turn to face the bucket, and a whistle. Chris Young gets good position, gets a good shot, and Blanchard retrieves the miss. Most shots are going to be missed opposite the side from which the shot is taken. Blanchard knew that and got good position on the weak side board. Sidney tried to go against Young, and he was able to alter that shot just enough. By the way, that foul whistle before that drive to the hoop was Blanchard, and it goes his first. And Akbar coming over the back. Picked up the foul that gives Michigan possession now. Akbai, a junior, 6'8", 262. Interesting story. Turnover, Boston College. Brings it down past midcourt. Kenny Walls. The shot off the iron, and Anderson, who can leap, Clark at 6'4". El Sunday CBS and the Jim Henson Company presents a television event of gigantic proportions. Matthew Modine leads an all-star cast in Jack of the Beanstalk. The real story, Sunday on CBS. 18 minutes left, second half. Queen walks it up for Michigan. Kroniger, three-point shot from the corner around the rim and out. Loose ball. Blanchard on the deck. How did he get that ball to Queen? He was dusting the floor. Queen, the little man. He's playing big. He's playing long. He's knocked down a couple of timely threes. And because he's not going to be able to get in the paint and finish, he's got to be able to knock down that open three-point shot. Michigan by three. Dorna can't the other way. Blanchard covers up. Check that. Yeah, Blanchard. Now Ingerson slicing. Tough shot. And the rebound goes to Sydney. Boy, look at him push. Through traffic. A little wild. It's on the deck. Michigan. And a timeout called by Michigan. Heads up play by Lavelle Blanchard. A timeout in Ann Arbor. Shoot. Create.
The HP Digital Photo Studio, featuring the Pavilion 7975 with the Intel Pentium 4 processor. How will you use it? Save up to $250 by mail on HP Digital Photography products. Had his chance to meet to the legendary Bo Schembechler. I was waiting outside his office, and he comes out a few minutes uh, before we were supposed to. <laughs> Get in here. Get in here now. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> oh. well, he's got all the ingredients. When you talk about a guy that you would want to have spearhead the revival of a program, Tommy Amaker has everything you want. I was very impressed watching him work practice yesterday. Very organized, very efficient, very little wasted time or energy. And I thought his players responded extremely well. And they're bringing that type of attention to detail and that type of effort and energy to this game here today. Can they sustain it is the question. Well, Michigan, three of six this half. Make that three of seven. Boston College, 0 for 5 from the floor. In the early minutes, Bell pushing behind. No whistle. Here comes Queen. They got two on one. Up to Blanchard and a whistle. And Clark, you talked about uh, Tommy Amaker. Here's, here's the rules that his players must abide by. Well, if you're going to build something, you've got to have a game plan, a roadmap. You've got to lay out how it's going to happen. And these are the hallmarks that he's using to build this program. Passionate. Be prepared. Be honest. Be Michigan, ultimately. Tap into that tradition. Have a standard that we're going to uphold. And that means doing the little things, Craig, on a consistent basis so that it becomes a habit, and then you can build upon that. So again, I think he's uh, a good fit for what Michigan is trying to get done here. And I think in time, he's going to get it clearly turned around. He's looking for a good start. A hey, biggest lead, but for Michigan, it's four. Not much against an explosive Boston College team. Bell has it in the lane, swoops it up and in. Oh, tough shot. <laughs> There was only one way to go, and that was up and under. 16 points for Bell. You'd never know he had knee surgery Halloween. He missed a couple of those exhibition games, but he's uh, been back for all five of the regular season games. Well, that's a terrific look by the seven-foot freshman, Dorna Camp. He found Agbai. That's just good high-low action. Double digits for Akbai. He's got 10. We're tied at 47. Rodiger working against Troy Bell. Leaves it for Bailey. The freshman who had six points in that first half. Loose ball once again. Boston College has it. Sydney. Little double pump. Took the step. Nope, we're going to say he was fouled before he uh, launched. Look at those <laughs> eyes. <laughs> He's full of all kinds of energy. Avery Queen whistle for his second foul. Chris Young will check in when we come back. Troy Bell and Boston College. 16 for Bell, the junior, and we're tied at 47. You know, all tied up in a close game. It's 47 all. And right there, folks, is Pioneer High School, where both Lavelle Blanchard and Ryan Sidney prepped. They did not play together as Sidney trans transferred in from Huron High School as Lavelle Blanchard was graduating, but both have had a key role in today's game thus far. Sidney has been everywhere and terrific in getting there. Scoring, rebounding, deflecting balls, passing for assists. Blanchard did not start as part of the dis disciplinary action from Tommy Amaker, but has managed to score well and rebound on the offensive glass. And a whistle off the rim. Well, with the conclusion of today's game, we will select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund, a tradition for 30 years. Fourth foul called on Dornicamp. So Andrew Bryant, number 34, will check in. He's on the deck with a couple of fouls, but played some, some pretty tough minutes. Well, they, really, Skinner. they really like his skill package. He's got good hands and nice touch. He's only a freshman. So Al Skinner anticipating that as he develops, he'll be a key call for them as the season goes on. 
But the strength of this team, obviously, is their backcourt. And Sydney and Bell, one of the finest tandems in all of the land when you talk about outstanding backcourts. You know, I, I want to talk about that because both Bell and Sydney, we had a great talk with them last night at shoot around. They said, well, in some publications, we're ranked number eight. And I could see the glimmer in especially Ryan Sydney's Well, Sydney does most of the talking yeah. whenever he's with anybody. And Bell is so soft-spoken. But you can tell. Oh, they did not like that a bit. It was something that they wanted to prove on the floor that they deserve a little higher ranking than that and clearly um, I'd go anywhere with those two in my backcourt. Ingerson tries to break free and a whistle from behind over the back and Bryant now with three fouls and Dornicamp's already on the bench with four. That's three for Bryant. Four for Dornicamp. I tell you what, Greg, Al Skinner and his staff wanted to attack Michigan inside and try to get Chris Young in foul trouble. They thought they could exploit his lack of shot blocking ability. He typically wants to go up and body you and not really challenge shots. Well, right now, Michigan is having their way going inside against Boston College. Ingerson, 85% shooter from the free throw line, makes his first. In and out on the second. And a whistle. Got in yeah. there early. Lane <laughs> That's one of the new rules this year. If two guys, one from each team, go into the lane, the first player in the lane is guilty of the violation. And that time it looked, appeared to be Akbach. Oh, how about that rebound? Back to Ingerson for three! Can't give him second shot. This kid has as good a stroke as I've seen in a freshman in the last few years. He can really shoot it. Well, he comes in 51% from the floor, but how about 62% shooter from the three-point line? A whistle, a Sydney shot fell off the rim. Al Skinner, last year's CBS Chevrolet Coach of the Year. Well, he was a, what, five different publications named him Coach of the Year. And a whistle. Again, off the shot by Ryan Sidney, and next is a showdown for an SEC championship berth and a possible shot at the national title card. Travis Stevens powers the Tennessee Vols against the Heisman hopeful Rex Grossman and the Florida Gators. For more, go to CBSSportsLine.com or AOL keyword CBS Sportsline. And there's Casey Clawson against Rex Grossman. Two tremendous quarterbacks. This will be a tremendous matchup tonight here on CBS. It really will be, not only for those teams, but obviously when you consider the... Heisman Trophy race, those two guys are clear candidates in a year when there is no real odds on favor to win the Heisman. But you would know more about the ball that doesn't bounce straight up. Uh -huh. I'd say Grossman right now, though, the leading candidate in my book for the Heisman and the follow and the putback for Boston College. By the way, Young on the bench now, Chris Young with four fouls. Mark that down at about the 13.55 mark. Queen inside, and a little wild play on the floor right now. And coming back the other way off the turnover will be Boston College. Michigan by two. Bryant up top, guarded by Blanchard. Walls from long range. Drop the iron. Blanchard the rebound. Mark Hodges' tempo this game changed with Young on the bench before. Well, you lack the inside presence if you're Michigan to be able to go inside and also to challenge a little bit on the glass and in the paint at the defensive end. Dominic Ingerson shuffled the feet a bit here. Took an extra step and another turnover, but what's kept Boston College ahead in the first half and really close here in the second is forcing turnovers and offensive rebounds. Michigan has done a nice job making them play in the half court, but that's, a, that's oh, where you miss a guy like yeah. Chris Young because with his size, maybe he deflects that pass or maybe he bothers that shot. But when he's not out there, Michigan becomes very small. Back by a nice entry pass to Bryant, his first bucket. And we're tied at 51. Ingerson has the stroke a little bit too strong. 
Bryant, another rebound. Here comes Bell. And a whistle looks like a push by the freshman, Dominic Ingerson. Troy Bell showing you his change of pace. He just paused Ingerson momentarily, then exploded by him. That's one of his greatest attributes. When you look at Troy Bell, terrific shooter and scorer, but he never really forces the issue. He always plays within himself, under control. 77% shooter from the free throw line. This shot can put Boston College in front. And Clark, let's get the book on Troy Bell. Well, we'll open it up. Sweet stroke. He lets the game come to him. I was just talking about his patience and poise. The ability to clean the house simply means he can take over. He can get your whole house clean when he decides to step on the offensive gas pedal. Top floor, middle floor, basement. Whatever you got under the roof, <laughs> you can get it cleaned up for you. Makes them both 18 points. 8 of 16, 50% from the floor. Clark, three boards and three assists. Pretty much a what you call complete game for Troy Bell to this point. And now, as you get to the 12-minute mark, Boston College trying to seize control. They go to a zone defense now, something different. They can't leave him, though. Ingerson squares up way off the mark. Hit the glass and ricochet down to Boston College. Bell the crossover. Drives, floats. Bailey wipes the board clean. Quick outlet pass leads him nicely. Blanchard, what's going to happen? He was hanging on the rim. No basket. Wow. Tough break. And you know, Blanchard, if he could have lifted off of one foot, he would have been able to dunk this ball cleanly. But because he had to stop and gather, it gave the defender a chance to get back in the play. CBS Sports coverage of NCAA men's basketball will continue after this message and a word from your local station. A cop has gone after a criminal this brutal, but it's the first. Inside Chrysler Arena, 35th season for this building. Boston College up by two. Look at the field goal percentage. Both clubs very hot, 51, 54 for Michigan. Second half, it's what you call the cool off. Yeah, it has cooled off, and you have to credit both defenses. I think from the start, both teams have really gotten after each other. And it's just kind of added up to poor shooting here in the second half. And Clark, that 6-0 run has occurred since they had to put Chris Young on the bench with his fourth foul. Last touch by Andrew Bryant. Both teams have shown the ability to change yeah. defenses, the willingness to change defenses. They've primarily been man-to-man, -man, but they have shown some zones as a way to change the pace. Michigan needs Gavin to get going. Groniger is a guy that needs to make shots. He needs help getting free for his shots, but he's got to knock down the good ones he gets. Last touch by Blanchard. Yeah, you make a good point. Groniger came in, 55% shooter from behind the arc. He struggled today, had a three early in the first half, and that's it. Left alone, too strong, and the rebound goes to Sidney. Again, Michigan very small without Chris Young on the floor. Agbaya squares up, laid it up on the rim, and it fell off. Queen across midcourt. Ingerson from the corner. Picked up by Bell, stolen right off his, right off his hip. Bell turns the motor up. And through the hands of Watson. Bell with the quick, strong hand swipes it away and then retains possession. But then at the other end, Boston College threw it away. So Bernard Robinson checks in. He's not been very productive, did not start. Only played eight minutes in the first half. That was a second steal for Troy Bell. Eight steals for Boston College. They average 10 a game. Because of their full court pressure and the quickness of their guards, they're able to get deflections and steals. Now Bailey cut one way. And Robinson cut the other. So a turnover for Michigan. Close game with 10-23 left. Boston College unbeaten at four tries, 4-0, ranked 15th in the country. And Michigan at 2-2. Two two. They're 2-0 two at home, Clark. They played well here, but lost two straight on the road. Both to Mid-American Conference teams, Western Michigan 
and Bowling Green. And that's a conference really to keep an eye on. Terrific basketball being played in that league, top to bottom. Robertson able to reach up and grab that ball away from Sydney. Now Queen down the lane. Nice give up. And he caught Blanchard standing a little bit flat footed. Back the other way. Give and go, Bill. Whistle. Well, in defense of Blanchard on that play, for the distance between the players, that pass was a little too too fast, too hard. And then it was a tough pass to handle. But if you're going to score, every now and then you have to catch a bad pass. And as a result, that over-penetration and the bobble of the ball allows Boston College to get out with an advantage in transition. And the free throw good by Troy Bell. Tomorrow, Marcus will sit down with Curtis Martin, the heart and the soul of the New York Jets. Is he headed to an MVP season? That and more tomorrow on the NFL Today. Bell with 19. Make it 20. Well, he had 14 of those in the first half, so all things considered, so far Michigan has done a pretty good job on he and Sydney, who had 17 in the first half. You know, Bell's coming off a 30-point game against St. Bonaventure, and he's pumped down 22 of those 30 in the second half, which helped Boston College pull away. Yeah, they came from 12 down to win by 14 on the road at St. Bonaventure. And that just points out the explosiveness this team has because of their strong perimeter play. How about the hands of Sydney able to slap that ball free? Bell brings it down for Boston College. Under nine and a half left here in Ann Arbor. BC by four. Make that a three. Make that seven point lead. Now that's a guy you don't expect to knock down the long ball. Andrew Bryant and the lead now beginning to go BC's way. 58-51 after the three-point bomb by Andrew Bryant. 9.20 left in the second half. There you see the turnover numbers. Michigan had eight in the first half, nine already here in the second. Boston College has started to squeeze the orange pretty good here. Only five in half two, five turnovers. And because of those turnovers, Michigan has not gotten shots the last couple of minutes. Bailey against Bryant in the corner brings it up top. Resets with 12 on the shot clock. Now Green around the horn. Gives it to Robinson. Tough shot wouldn't go. Bryant battles underneath. A fresh 35. How about that second effort? Blanchard battles hard for the bucket. He shoehorned along that baseline. I don't know how he managed to come up with it and then know where he was enough to finish the play. That was a terrific job by Blanchard inside. Blanchard now. Nine rebounds, seven this half. Yeah, he's an excellent offensive rebounder. Half of those rebounds are on the offensive glass. Bodies on the deck, no whistle. Boy, they're crashing the boards, and Sydney comes up with another bucket, 20. The backcourt of Bell and Sydney now with 40 points out of the 60 scored by Boston College. They put 51 in the hole against St. Bonaventure. Well, they score in so many ways off the offensive glass in transition with the three-point shot. And they're relentless. This whole Boston College team is relentless. Queen with the lob underneath, I believe, out of bounds, the call and a timeout here in Ann Arbor. Boston College on top by seven. 7.54 left. You look at the rebounds, and Clark, that pretty much tells the story. Plus 11 turnovers, it's minus 7 for Michigan. They have not taken care of the ball. And also a big story in this game is uh, Chris Young with four fouls. Boston College has gone on a 13-2 run since he was forced to sit down. Exactly. He was a guy who was scoring inside, putting pressure on Boston College's defense, and he was taking up space. And now with him out of the lineup, Boston College has been able to use their experience and their perimeter play and their ability to get to that glass. Their guards, especially Ryan Sidney, I mean, he just attacks the ball on the glass, and that's why Michigan is down seven. Turnovers and extra shots by virtue of the offensive boards for Boston College. Chris Young has re-entered the game. Tommy Amaker sensing that things getting out of hand and needs his big presence back on the floor. Well, he's guarding that paint, forces a pass inside to Bryant. 
Matthew Bryant in this half now with seven points. He played defensive minutes for Al Skinner in the first 20 minutes. Now he's become an offensive threat. Well, they've got multiple weapons. They try to get everybody involved. Bernard Robinson finally gets on the scoreboard. Only a second bucket from the floor, four points. He finally gets on the scoreboard this half. Yeah. I don't know how much the stitches in that right hand, but he shoots from his left hand. But still handling the ball. He's got the bottom. Bryant dumps it down baseline, and Bell just says, thank you very much, 22. 64-55, Boston College trying to go 5-0. and Last year, they got off to what, an 11-0 start. It's a good basketball team. They've got experience. They play a style that's tough to handle. Blanchard, all on his back, knocks the three ball down. Lavelle Blanchard with 15. You know what? Michigan's showing some guts of what Tommy Amaker wants. He wants emotion. Back the other way, loose ball, picked up Anderson. Oh, that's a little quick. That shot by Sidney trying to answer the three by Blanchard. Anderson moves, baseline, and he was uh, touched and pulled as he made his move by Kenny Walls on Sunday on 60 Minutes. Remember when only artists drew profiles? Now law enforcement officers draw them too. Is that a good thing? Depends. Sunday on 60 Minutes. Second foul on Kenny Walls, the senior from San Francisco, and that puts Dominic Ingerson at the free throw line. Both teams are over the limit, so on all common fouls, there will be free throws. And if you're Michigan, that's one way to chip away at it. If you can get yourself to the line, also gives you a chance to get additional oxygen for the stretch run. You got to miss. miss. You need them all. Michigan 10 of 14 as a team. They're going coast to coast. Oh, Ryan Sidney. You know, he wanted to make the statement. He was jawing with the, the student section before this game. They were doing that little heckle thing about Pioneer High School, and he said, just watch me. He is putting on a show. Boy, there he goes. Back by, gives it off. Sidney. And he's fouled. Walls had it as he went to the hole. Here's Sydney finishing in transition. And here he is. Look at him amped up. He can't wait. This was prior to the game as they came to the floor to get ready for this action. Ryan Sydney <laughs> had it strapped on tight. Oh. <laughs> I mean, just talking to him yesterday, you could tell this guy has one motive. And it's full throttle all the time, on and off the floor. Oh, yeah. Now Skinner told oh, yeah. us. You know, he said, "This is my office. I'm not going to let the crowd bother me because when I come to my office, I punch the clock, and that means work." Yes, sir. And I'm really impressed with him being able to control himself as well as he has. Typically, coming home against the school that you feel spurned you. Angerson kicks one down from three-point land. Michigan not giving up. Chrysler Arena, 68-62, Boston College. Michigan only has one timeout remaining. Both teams over the limit. Sydney quickly fires the three and hits. Oh, he is bringing it. I started to make the point that oftentimes you come home to play a school that you feel spurned you. And you might get too hyped up, but he has been terrific from the start. He may have forced one or two shots, and that's it. His energy level at both ends has been terrific. His production has been outstanding. And Craig, I don't know how we get that orange from there. Yeah, I don't, I, let's see. In my uh, earlier how, days, I might have been able to leave here and go get it. Well, someone looked at you and said, "Can you come over here?" But here's the easy way. Yeah, that's it. Get a stick and get just poke stick. it out of yeah. there. Sometimes necessity, the mother of invention. I don't know if that stick was intended for that purpose, but <laughs> with the ball where it was. You know what? I, I don't think Avery Queen at 5'7 had a chance. <laughs> but that stick, he could have made it out. <laughs> Under five minutes left. 
Bryant up top. Craig, you just get the sense that Michigan just uh, doesn't have enough staying power. Backdoor Bell, 24. So the backcourt combination now closing in on 50. 49 points for Bell and Sydney. So they, uh, if they're upset about that eighth ranking in backcourt, you can understand the argument. <laughs> Blanchard plays hard. The whistle as the putback by Robinson wouldn't go down. Boston College executing beautifully. Little shuffle cut. Back door, and there's Sydney making the pass. Bell making the layup. They've just gradually kind of worn the Wolverines down. It's not over. Over four minutes to go. But you just get the sense that that backcourt duo and the experience that Boston College has in the backcourt and up front starting to take its toll on Michigan. Sydney picked up the foul, his third. Robinson held to just five points. He's a left-hander, but again, you can see that right hand is heavily bandaged after taking a swipe. And he, you know, he just, you don't do it. I mean, and Tommy Amaker said, you know, I want emotion from this team, but it's got to be controlled emotion. And channeled in the right direction. A rare miss, but still battling for the rebound was Sydney and Robinson. This guy is not a little treat to watch play. Ryan Sidney. He's not even sweating. Look at him. I mean, he's not even perspiring. He's been going 100 miles an hour since last night. A lot of friends, a lot of family in town. In fact, he was pointing up to the Raptors saying, you know what, I've got, I've got this section, I've got this section, I've got this section. And he throws an air ball. <laughs> the alligator on that one. Queen behind the back. Lost the handle, but a whistle, and it looks like it'll be against Troy Bell. Next Saturday, CBS puts up on an NCAA hoops doubleheader first. Coach K's Duke Blue Devils take on Tommy Amaker's Michigan Wolverines, then the Tar Heels. The North Carolina tangle with the Kentucky Wildcats. That's where I'll be. That's next Saturday in the home of the NCAA championship. CBS Sports, and for more, go to CBSSportsLine.com or AOL keyword CBS Sportsline. Well, Duke clearly the number one team in the country, and they've been playing like it. Kentucky is a team that I think is going to move up from that number 14 ranking as the season goes on. Tubby Smith has some good depth, good size. He's got some nice ingredients. North Carolina struggling right now under Matt Jordan. That'll be interesting to see how they respond with this big matchup. There's a turnover. Agba picked up the foot and a timeout here in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and Boston College trying to battle to the end. 73-65. A road to the Final Four is sponsored by Prudential Financial, growing and protecting your wealth. And by Message from America. Visit Circuit City today to record your message. As we look at Boston College in Michigan, 73-65 BC, Michigan Clark, only one timeout possession, er possession arrow favors Boston College. What a game by Ryan Sidney, 25 points, his backcourt mate, Troy Bell with 22. Michigan still in it if they can knock down a couple of perimeter shots. Ingerson tries to drive and a whistle. And here's our CBS Sportsline stat of the game. Backcourt scoring. Boston College 49, Michigan 20. And it's been that combination of Bell and Sydney. For complete game stats, go to CBSSportsline.com or AOL keyword CBS Sportsline. Troy Bell recovering nicely from surgery back on. October 31st, the surgery on the right knee. He's rehabbed extremely hard to get back to this point. It feels like he's right at about 90%. And the other 10% in terms of being completely healthy is just a matter of repetitions in practice in the game and just gaining confidence from a psychological and mental standpoint. Chuck Bell, or Bailey that is, checking in for Michigan. And the Sydney layup off the mark. 
Michigan's still in this game. Ingerson thought about the three. Now he pulls the trigger in and out and a whistle. He's going to shoot three yeah, foul shots. And that was right on line, almost a four-point play. That was a tough shot by Ryan Sidney. I said earlier I thought he had played it under very good control. He's forced it only a couple of times, and that was a case in point. With the lead on the road, you want to try to use the clock a little more. And there's the bump by Agby. Good ball fake to get Sidney out of the picture. And then Agby challenging the shot, just unable to control himself when he came down. Big free throws here for Dominic Ingerson. He struggled from the line here the last couple of trips. His second gets the roll off the iron. 14 for the freshman from Santa Barbara. Only 18 years young. Has three assists to go with the 14 points. Made them all. Impressive. Under some pressure. Cuts this one down to four. Hold on. Buckle up. 324. And Queen looks like he got a hand check whistle on Bell. Tommy Amaker saying, look, we don't need to send these guys to the line, especially Bell, an 86% career free throw. That's 24. Make it 25. NFL tomorrow, single header action here on CBS. Denver and Miami, oh, that's going to be a good one. Tom Brady taking on the New York Jets. And it all begins with the NFL Today presented by Southwest Airlines. For more, go to NFL.com or AOL keyword NFL.com. One more for Bell. 26. For Troy Bell, 75-69, Boston College. Ingerson up top clean moves around Sydney good ball movement by the Wolverines too strong Boy Queen inside traffic underneath and the shot wouldn't go the tip by Young and everybody on the deck jump ball wow. possession arrow Boston College Boy, you've got to finish those in close and they got good looks here. Good work by Queen to retrieve the rebound. And Blanchard just overshot it. And then Young couldn't get the tap in to go. And now Boston College gets possession by virtue of the possession error. During some of the conference, during some of the tournament action to start the college basketball season, there was experimentation with the jump ball. And uh, I kind of like to, I'd like to see that come back. I'm with you on that. Yeah, I'd like to see it come back. It's another play, another form of strategy, it's another situation that has to be coached and dealt with. Great pass, but it was a little strong by Sidney, rolled off the back of the iron. Well, coming up next right here on CBS, don't you dare go anywhere. Travis Stevens, Rex Grossman, fourth-ranked Tennessee at number two-ranked Florida. And that's coming up next. And how about the coaching matchup in this one? Philip Fulmer against Steve Spurrier, a national championship. Both have won. Spurrier leads head-to-head 7-2. That's tonight right here on CBS. Those are outstanding coaching records and teams. And well, I wish I had a chance to pull up the seat and check that one out. Something about an airplane tonight. Yeah, huh? yeah. I'll Six. be watching the scores late at night tonight. 16 points, seven rebounds. Young has not missed a free throw until there. But the putback by Bailey is uh, knocked away. Andrew Bryant was there. Heads up. Under two and a half, five point game for Boston College. Bailey thought he was all alone and went a little soft. Needed to try to punch that one. Sydney up top walls with 15 on the shot clock. On the drive, the walls has it. Left-hander, baseline, around the rim and out. Young rebounds, two on one, Michigan. Queen gives it. Contact, got it! Oh my, what a bucket by Robinson.
excellent penetration and pass by Queen, and that's a big time finish. Robinson going with the left hand. Elevation, extension, and the kind roll. 88% shooter is Robinson. Smooth stroke, a three point play. Nine points for Robinson, seven this half. It's a two point game with two minutes on the clock. Boston College, 15th rank, unbeaten in four tries on the road. Michigan, two and two. It's the Big East against the Big Ten. Akbar, oh, big shot. Queen across midcourt. Robinson holds it high, little move off. I think he the pivot, up. and yeah, they caught him. Sure did. Sure did. Changed his pivot foot and walked with the ball. Nineteenth turnover clock by Michigan. Twelve committed by Boston College this afternoon. That offensive rebounding by Boston College and some missed free throws here yeah. in the second half by Michigan have really hurt. Somehow breaking free and Sydney gets yet another bucket. 27 for Ryan Sydney. The lead is four, a minute on the clock. Robinson fires for three, blocked. Queen tries to defend, ball on the deck. And it's going to be Michigan basketball on the possession, on the possession arrow. Well, that's a terrific bit of hustling by that young man right there, Avery Queen. All five foot seven of them extended and then got to the deck before anybody else would or did. Well, the word on Queen is simple defender, gutty. Way well, sticks his nose in, doesn't he? Yeah, I think he's had a pretty solid floor game, too. Big possession for Michigan. 48 seconds and change. 79 73, Boston College. Anderson. Right to left, Young gives it off, turnover. Sydney, coast to coast. This will be a game Sydney will remember a lifetime. 29 as he comes back home to Ann Arbor. Played some tough D, stood his ground, loose ball. Boston College will coast away with their fifth win of the season. There's Al Skinner after that 27 win season Clark got a new four year extension on the contract that runs it through 2007 and 2008 as even killed as they come he gives his players tremendous freedom he makes high demands of them but he's a joy to play for when you talk to his players they enjoy playing for Al Skinner. Troy Bell with the free throw. Well, the Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are from Boston College, Ryan and Sydney for 29 points. Chris Young, even though foul trouble, Clark, 16 points. Chevrolet will make a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. Ten point game, Boston College, 5 and 0 oh to start this season. 11 seconds remaining. Clark, quickly, Michigan, what do you learn with this, with this first year head coach Tommy Amaker in a game like this? Well, you take a look at the little things. You look at the effort, the execution, although there were a lot of turnovers, the energy was good, the intensity was there. So you have to hang your hat on some of the little victories. Are you trying to do the things that we talked about in the game plan? By and large, I think Michigan did that. There was some breakdowns, but I think Tommy Amaker and her staff will be able to look at this film, look at this game, and point out a lot of good things that his players did. And that's how you try to build it. Kenny Walls fouling out with five points, so Al Skinner taking his time to find the replacement. He will uh, insert Jermaine Watson, a freshman. This Boston College team, Craig, is a legitimate top 15 team. 
And when you've got the kind of backcourt they have, and Agby, very underrated. People have slept on him a little bit, but he showed me today he can step away and shoot it. He's physical. I mean, he's a very solid player. He's been a starter for all three years that he's been here. Uh, he shot the lights out last year at 53%, struggling a little bit here to start this season at 44. And the final seconds here in Ann Arbor. Boston College with the win in fine fashion, 83-74 as they pull away. Troy Bell and Ryan Sidney really doing the job in the backcourt for Boston College. For Clark Pellog, I'm Craig Bowler. Jack, let's go back to New York City and Tim Brando. All right, Craig, thank you. Boston College, a winner. Now we're going to take all of you out to the McHale Center where Kevin Harlan and Billy Packer are standing by. Kansas with the lead over Arizona as we join them.